The big problem between China and Taiwan is like a never-ending story with lots of twists. China says Taiwan is part of its family, and they want to bring them back even if they have to use force. But Taiwan feels like its own boss with its own government and army. Some countries say Taiwan is independent, but others say it's all part of China. The two sides often argue and do tricky things with their military and talk tough. People all over the world can't agree on what to do. It's a big puzzle with lots of pieces, and everyone is trying to figure out how to make it work without making things worse. It's like a tense movie where you don't know what's going to happen next, and everyone is hoping for a happy ending, but it's not so easy to find. Observers worry that a Taiwan conflict may lead to a major war in Asia involving China, Taiwan, and supportive nations. Despite China's threats, an army general believes China won't invade Taiwan. She cites reasons, making it unlikely. The conflict involves historical, political, and cultural factors. Both China and Taiwan share a 4,000-year history as part of the same ethnic group, the Han Chinese. Since the 1949 Chinese Civil War, political differences emerged, with the Communist Party controlling China and the KMT retreating to Taiwan. The Communist Party of China, CPC, asserts that Taiwan is a renegade province, insisting on reunification with China even through force if necessary. On the other hand, the Kuomintang, KMT, which initially claimed to be the legitimate government of all China, pragmatically accepted the reality of the split. The KMT supports the One China principle, maintaining that there is only one China but allowing for diverse interpretations. In contrast, the Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, currently governing Taiwan, advocates for the island's sovereignty and independence as a distinct nation. Rejecting the One China principle, the DPP promotes the one country, two systems model, seeking significant autonomy for Taiwan under China's sovereignty. Recent years have witnessed an escalation in the conflict between China and Taiwan. China has intensified its military and diplomatic pressure on Taiwan, conducting frequent exercises and patrols near Taiwan's airspace and waters. Additionally, China has diminished Taiwan's international standing by poaching its diplomatic allies and blocking its participation in global global organizations. Taiwan, in response, has bolstered its self-defense capabilities and actively sought support from the international community, with a particular emphasis on its crucial security partnership with the United States. This alliance is vital for Taiwan, not only diplomatically but also as a significant supplier of arms. The intricate dynamics between China and Taiwan continue to pose challenges, with geopolitical tensions influencing international relations in the Asia-Pacific region. The evolving situation underscores the complexities of cross-strait relations and the delicate balance maintained by Taiwan in asserting its autonomy while navigating the broader geopolitical landscape. The issue between China and Taiwan is a big challenge for the world. If a fight happens, it could involve other powerful countries like the United States, Japan, and Australia. This problem also affects how China and Taiwan do business and interact with each other. But some people think China is just talking tough and won't really attack Taiwan. Taiwan. These experts say China might not be ready for a big war and that its strong language is more about its own politics and strategy. They believe China may not be sure about winning a quick and definite victory over Taiwan and knows that a war would be very expensive and risky. One strong voice against China's actions is Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen. She leads the Democratic Progressive Party. In a recent talk, Tsai confidently shared her thoughts about China and why she believes they won't attack Taiwan soon. Tsai mentioned that China has many issues within its own borders that need attention. These problems are taking up China's focus and resources, making it less likely for them to be aggressive towards other countries. China is dealing with a slow economy due to the recent pandemic, trade disputes with the United States, and financial troubles in its state-owned businesses and local governments. Additionally, China is experiencing a decrease in its population because of the one-child policy and an aging population, impacting its workforce and social security. Security system. Tsai also mentioned that China is having problems with its health care and government systems due to a public health crisis. China is also facing environmental issues like air pollution, water shortage, and soil problems, which will affect its food and public health. Additionally, China is trying to stop corruption by targeting top officials and powerful groups, causing tensions in the Communist Party and the military. Her point makes sense, because China is dealing with social problems like protests and resistance 
resistance. People are unhappy about inequality and injustice, leading to movements in Hong Kong, Xinjiang, Tibet, and the mainland. Moreover, China is getting criticized globally for its aggressive actions, damaging its reputation and relationships with other countries. Tsai also mentioned that these challenges make China feel insecure and defensive. It's harder and more expensive for China to start a war with Taiwan. China is unsure if it can handle a long-term conflict with Taiwan due to geographical, logistical, and technological problems. Taiwan has a strong military supported by the United States and other allies, able to defend against any Chinese attack. Taiwan also has a resilient and democratic society that can resist Chinese pressure or propaganda. In her words, she thinks it's not the right time for China to invade Taiwan, considering economic, financial, and political challenges. The international community has made it clear that war is not an option, and everyone benefits from peace and stability. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has reportedly told the People's Liberation Army to be ready for a potential invasion of Taiwan before 2027, according to U.S. intelligence. This is the first time a specific deadline has been mentioned for China's goal to take over Taiwan. However, the exact timing and method of China's possible attack are uncertain, and experts have different opinions. Some think China might act by 2023, taking advantage of issues from the pandemic and the U.S. trade war. Others believe China might wait until 2047, coinciding with the 100th anniversary of the People's Republic of China and the end of the One Country, Two Systems arrangement for Hong Kong, a territory also claimed by China. Meanwhile, the PLA, People's Liberation Army, has increased its military pressure on Taiwan to weaken its morale and resistance. They aim to prevent any support for Taiwan's independence, especially from the United States. The PLA frequently enters Taiwan's air defense identification zone, an area Taiwan monitors for security. They also conduct drills simulating invasion and blockade scenarios, often triggered by what China sees as provocative moves by Taiwan, like meetings with U.S. officials or receiving U.S. arms sales. Tsai accused China of interfering in Taiwan's internal affairs and elections, trying to influence public opinion in favor of China. China uses various tactics, including cyber attacks, disinformation, propaganda, and infiltration in every election since 1996. This includes military stress and economic coercion, along with extensive campaigns on traditional and social media. China's interference aims to disrupt Taiwan's democracy and stability, creating divisions among its people. Taiwan is taking steps to counter this interference, strengthening cybersecurity, promoting media literacy, and exposing China's influence operations. In response to this issue, Taiwanese people stay calm, though some suggest they might be too calm. The reality is that Taiwanese people are aware of the situation. Tsai Ing-wen will end her presidency after the January election, having served the maximum two terms allowed by the Constitution. During her tenure, tensions with China rose due to Xi Jinping's increased military threats. Beijing severed ties with Tsai's government, seeing her Democratic Progressive Party as separatists aiming to split Taiwan from China. Tsai's presidency focused on strengthening international ties to deter a Chinese invasion. She worked on improving Taiwan's diplomatic relations and trade partnerships, especially with the United States, Japan, and Australia. Additionally, Tsai aimed to raise Taiwan's profile in international organizations like the World Health Organization and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. She advocated for Taiwan's meaningful participation in the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for the Trans-Pacific Partnership involving 11 countries in the Asia-Pacific region. In the interview, she was asked if moving semiconductor production to the U.S. might make Taiwan less valuable in protecting itself from Chinese annexation. Taiwan is the top global producer of advanced chips, crucial to worldwide technology, contributing over 20% to its GDP and employing 250,000 people. Tsai said Taiwan's semiconductor industry is irreplaceable due to its integration across various sectors like design, manufacturing, testing, and more. She emphasized Taiwan's skilled workforce, transparent legal system, and stable democracy. Tsai showcased Taiwan's achievements in biotechnology, green energy, smart agriculture, and digital transformation, expressing confidence in Taiwan's unmatched role in global chip development. She affirmed Taiwan's commitment to cooperation, sharing expertise, and safeguarding its values against Chinese pressure. Opinions are welcome in the comments.